Do you Whereas to tell a child, you're, you go to this church, which means you'll go to heaven, but your little playmates don't go to that church, and therefore will go to hell, seems to me to be an unpleasant thing to be saying. But yes, that I'm, is. Maybe I'm in a minority then. That could be an unpleasant thing, but how do you develop... Actually, an evil thing let's, to say. Let's call it evil, only, Christopher. That only a religious person would dream of saying. Let's call it evil. Where does evil come from? Religion. <laughs> As a Sufi Muslim, I'm very ruffled by the title of your book. Of all the titles that you likely had at your disposal, did you have to settle for the uh, literal negation of Allahu Akbar? Yes. I thought so. Thank you for that question. Thank you. Oh, it's a very good question. I'm glad. I wanted to come well, back to it. Um, Why? Yeah. The, as I've said, I, I think that all religions are wrong in the same way, in, in that they privilege uh, faith over, over reason. But they're not all equally bad in the same way all the time. I mean, if I'd been writing in the 1930s, I would certainly have said that the Roman Catholic Church was the most dangerous religion in the world because of its open alliance with fascism and anti-Semitism, which the damage from that our culture has n never recovered from and, and never will. But at the moment it's very clear to me that the, the most toxic form that religion takes is the Islamic form. The horrible idea of wanting to end up with Sharia, with a religion go governed state, a state of religious law, and that the best means of getting there is jihad, holy war, and that Muslims have a special right to feel aggrieved enough to demand this, I think is an absolute obscene wickedness, and I think their religion is nonsense. And the, the entire, I, I, I had in entirety? Another, I had another, in its entirety. The, the, the idea of God, God speaks to some illiterate merchant warlord in Arabia, and he's able to write this down perfectly, and it contains the answers to all humans. Don't, don't, don't waste my time. It's bullshit. But, but you're saying the same also about that, Also that God, that God speaks... The Archangel Gabriel speaks only Arabic, it seems. I this just want to say, in retrospect, we were very civil, actually. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> this is, no, this is... Uh, is this, this the same is, characterization uh, of all uh, religions? Uh, well, actually, no, because, remember, Islam makes one special claim for itself. All religions claim to be revealed truth. They, they all, all are founded by divine revelation. But Islam, rather dangerously, says, ours is the last and final one. There can't be any more after this. This is God's last word. Now, that's straight away a temptation to violence and intolerance, and if you note, it's a temptation they seem quite willing to fall for. Re Rabbi, Second, do you have any call? I had another motive, I had yes. another motive, which is this. If you remember Dick Gregory, the older comrades here, Will, great black comedian and civil rights activist, when he came to write his memoir, he called it nigger. Right. It upset a lot of people, including his old mum, who called him and said, why are you doing this? And he says, mama, every time you hear that word again, they're selling my book. <laughs> <laughs> so every, every Allah who Akbar reminds people that we're in a very serious struggle with a very depraved religion. And there are and that help is available. Friend, you, you, you give look, no quarter? I, I, look, he believes in the prophecy of Muhammad. I'm sorry to say, I, I think he's been at best conned. Yeah. Our time is ticking down. In other words, we don't particularly welcome the idea of the annihilation either of ourselves or, the, or of the uh, entrop entropic heat death of the universe. We don't like the idea. But there's a good deal of evidence to suggest that that is what's going to happen. And there's very, very little evidence to suggest that I'll see you all again in some theme park. I, there's absolutely no evidence for that at all. So I'm willing to accept, on the evidence, conclusions that may be unwelcome to me. I'm sorry if I sound as if I'm spelling that out. Probably about 180,000 years ago, a, an appalling global warming crisis occurred. And the, the estimate is that the number of humans in Africa went down to between 40 and 30,000. <laughs> this close to joining every other species that had gone extinct. It's, there's a certain arrogance to this assumption that all of this, all of this extraordinary development was all about us. The tremendous wastefulness of it, the tremendous cruelty of it, the tremendous caprice of it, the tremendous tinkering and incompetence of it, never mind, at least we're here. The whole universe was designed with just you in mind. There's no, there's no claim I know how to make that says atheism is true, because atheism is the statement that a certain proposition isn't true. So uh, I wish you'd get this bit right. But I would say, yes, I think we have free will. When asked why I think so, I would have to take refuge in philosophical irony and say, because I don't think we have any choice but to have free will.
But the Christian answer is, of course you have free will. The boss insists upon it. Christopher, I've, I've got to call you down on refer, referring to circumcision as genital mutilation. My son cried more at his first haircut than he did at his bris. And statistically... You weren't doing it right then. <laughs> statistically, the, the only long-term effect that it seems to have on people is it increases their chances of winning a Nobel Prize. I can't, um, I can't find the... the um compulsory uh, mutilation of the genitals of children no subject for humor in that way, or flippancy in that way. Maimonides says very plainly that it's designed to repress uh, sexual pleasure, to deprive us, uh, a, ma a male child as far, far as possible of the opportunity of that. Uh, the full excision, um, uh, not just the snip or the, the, minor, the full mandatory, mandatory covenant which is fantastically painful. Uh, leads to trauma, um, leads to the dulling of the sexual uh, relationship, and uh, can be in itself life-threatening at that moment. We have the records, I can show them to you, of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds in the United States of uh, boy babies who've died or, or had life-threatening infections as a result of this disgusting practice. That you, that a person as humane as yourself, can sit here and, be, and think of that as a fit subject for humor shows what I mean. Religion makes morally normal people say and do disgusting and wicked things. And you've just proved my point for me. Shame on you for saying what you just said. Shame on you for saying it about your own son, my God. Let's move on. Yes, let's. What next? Cutting the labia of little girls. At least Judaism doesn't do that. This is a question. What, what, if, what if a Muslim was to say to you just now, my little girl cried more at her first haircut than when I cut off her clitoris. What would you think of me if I was to say such a disgusting thing? Well... Remember, we are not talking about detail here. We're talking about whether religion makes people behave better or not. You're Joseph Stalin. You've taken over Russia. You've been educated in a seminary in Georgia, by the way. Up till 1917, for hundreds of years, Hundreds of millions of Russians have been told that the head of the state is a god. That the Tsar is above power, ordinary secular power, that he's, and he's the head of the Russian Orthodox Church as well as the... You shouldn't be in the dictatorship business if you can't take advantage of a well, a deep well of credulity and servility like that. It's your golden opportunity. What does he do? Heresy trials. Heresy trials, witch hunts. Miraculous discoveries such as Lysenko's biology, the worship of the leader from whom all blessings flow, as I described North Korea, the most religious state I've ever seen. Um, mutatis mutandis, this would apply also to Mao's China, with the same background of superstition and civility. Now, for there to be a fair test about this, you'd have to do the following. And no one I've ever debated with has even tried it. So you be the first. You find me a state or a society that threw off theocracy and threw off religion and said we adopt the teachings of Lucretius and Democritus and Galileo and Spinoza and Darwin and Russell and Jefferson and Thomas Paine and we make those what we teach our children we make that scientific and rational humanism our teaching and you find me that state that did that and fell into tyranny and slavery and famine and torture and then we'll be on a level playing field. As it is, all you've done is show that the idea of worship and the idea of credulity and the idea of servility and slavery to religion is a bad idea in the first place. But none of the czars and none of the Chinese kings... None of the... None By the way, the Russian, the Russian Orthodox Church always stayed with Stalin, always stayed with Stalin. But they never killed 30% of their population. Who didn't? The Russians never killed 30% of the population before the communists took over, 20 or 30%. No czar ever did that. No, no Christian czar ever did any killing on it. Well, no, excuse me, they started the First World War. They started the pogroms. They brought the protocols of the elders of Zion to, that was imported by czarist secret policemen to National Socialist uh, Christian gangsters in Europe, how much do you think 
the export of Russian Orthodox anti-Semitism costs us in point of lives and war. And have you ever counted up what happened to uh, the wars uh, in the wars that Tsarism started and carried on, and the persecutions, and the famines, and the tortures, and the starvation, and the people who just died of neglect? Come on. You want to do this accounting? I'm here. I'm really here for you. Or what, the Serbian, or what the Serbian Orthodox and the Russian Orthodox have just done in the Balkans. The, yes. the most recent genocide we've seen in Europe, entirely done by, by a Russian and a Serbian Orthodox fascists and Catholic 